Today I will show you a film from 1983 titled Scarface. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. After Fidel Castro, the former president of Cuba, opened the harbor at Mariel, boats full of people traveled to US to reunite with their relatives. One of the refugees who fled to the US, Tony, is being interrogated by Border Patrol. He lies that he has no relatives in the US. The officer grabs his hand and asks about the tattoo, to which he replies that it is for his sweetheart. Sweetheart my ass. The officer repeats. He continues, explaining that the guys in a prison have pitchfork tattoos like this, signifying that they're killers. Tony confesses that he has been in a prison one time for buying dollars, but officers grab Tony anyway, sending him over to the refugee camp. He asks for one more minute to talk to the boss. His statement that he is a political prisoner doesn't seem to convince him and he is escorted out. Tony does not give a shit about where he is taken. On a bus, Tony asks his friend what he told them. Chico explained to officials that he was in sanitation as he was instructed by Tony. It irritates Tony because he had to tell that he was in the sanitarium, not sanitation. That's why he's in the bus now. In the camp, Chico is happy to share the good news with Tony. They can be out of here in 30 days with a green card and a job in Miami. He goes on to say that a man named Rabenga, who used to be one of Castro's top dogs, arrived at the detention center today. While he was in prison, he tortured some guys to death and one of Guy's brothers is now a rich guy in Miami who wants the favor repaid. Tony tells to convey a message to Chico's friends that it would be a pleasure to carve up Rabenga for a green card. Cuban refugees are rioting at the detention center, burning tents and attacking guards. While the show is going on, Rabenga tries to hide in one of the tents and notices Chico following him with a knife in his hand. Scared to death, Rabenga tries to escape by the back door when suddenly Tony shows up and pierces a knife in his stomach. He does not make it. What a way to receive their green cards. While working at the cafe, Tony complains that he did not come to wash dishes and that Chico's big shot friend better come up with something soon. After the tough day, they are relaxing when suddenly, the boss approaches, saying that two guys are looking for them. Chico is agreeably surprised, because he promised Tony that he will come. They come to find the guys and Chico introduces his acquaintance, Omar, who says he has a job for them, to unload a boat with 25 tons of pot. While Chico is excited about this job, Tony asks if Omar is kidding about the low pay. Omar says that they could have found a cheaper dishwasher to get rid of Rabenga which pisses Tony even more. Then why didn't you man? Don't be calling me no fucking dishwasher, I'll kick your fucking monkey ass along the fucking After a small fight, Omar offers a new deal, to go to the hotel and bring Yeyo back, for which they will receive 5 grand each. He says that they need a few more guys with them and threatens that the boss will stick their heads to their asses if something goes wrong which doesn't scare them, they take the deal. After Omar leaves, Chico points out that Tony is pushing his luck with his reckless behavior with them, but Tony does not care, saying that Chico acts as if he owes them, teaching him a lesson how problems should be solved. Wash them yourself, right? You? I retire! On Friday, they arrive at the hotel and Tony explains to everyone that money stays in the car until he's out. Accompanied by one of his guys, he hops out of the car and walks to the hotel room. After knocking on the door, they are invited to come in by Hector. The door is left open so his brothers can see if everything is alright, but unnecessarily, since brothers are busy with other business, they don't pay attention to what is happening. Hector explains that the staff is not here and gets irritated when he finds out about the money, which Tony didn't bring. Situation gets out of control when one of Hector's guys puts a gun to Tony's friend's head and they both get disarmed. His guy is being tortured to say where the money is, but Tony does not say a word. After he's been divided, Tony is next in line, but gets saved by Chico who felt that something bad is happening. Unfortunately, Hector escapes by cutting the neighbor's door and makes it to the street, but not far away, since he's badly injured. Tony catches him and shoots him down, not paying attention to the people and police which are fastly approaching. They manage to get away. Later, Tony calls Omar to tell him that somebody messed up, but the money and even the yayo is with him. He makes it clear that he will deliver to the boss himself. Together with Chico, they arrive at the Lopez residence, where they meet the boss, Frank. He is amused by the fact that it was fun for Tony to get rid of the guy, and offers them a drink. They relax on the couch while waiting for Lopez's lady to go to a nice restaurant. Tony's eyes said everything when he noticed her in the elevator on the way down. Elvira is a lady with an attitude who shows her unwillingness to go to the restaurant where they head all the time. While Chico is having fun on the dance floor, Frank is teaching Tony a lesson, to not underestimate the other guy's greed. Elvira continues with the second lesson, to not get high on your own supply, but it is clear she is not following that lesson. Tony enjoys his time in the new company with a cigar and expensive champagne. At the same time Elvira is very bored and wants to dance, but Frank says he better have a heart attack and sends Tony to the dance floor. While practicing some new moves, 
Tony asks questions to know more about Alvira, but she does not need any new friends, especially from the banana boat. It offends Tony, he's not a criminal and looks like Elvira has not been fucked in a year. She counters that it is none of his business, but Tony likes that baby has started to talk to him. She demands not to call her like that, but Tony has other plans, he just needs some time. After the party, Tony and Chico drive home when Tony shares to his buddy that Elvira likes him. He knows it because of the eyes, Chico. They never lie. Chico is worried about being killed by the boss and says to be happy for what he has, but Tony fancies what is coming to him, the world and everything in it. On the beach, Tony talks about the rich life he would be living if he had come 10 years ago. This place is a paradise for him. He tries his charm and is rejected by the lady after offering her an ice cream, but Chico knows a better way to get some chicks. Chico tries his luck and gets smashed in the face. After they both got rejected, Tony says that in this country they should make money first, get power and only then they get the women. They are ready to pick up Elvira who looks surprised about the fact and even more about the car, it looks like someone's nightmare. This is where she steps in by picking out a new car for Tony, who wants to show off to her. He says he wants a tiger and will drive him in the front seat of his new car. She is bored and wants to meet Frank, making her way out, when Tony tells Chico to close the deal and get a cab. Tony and Elvira get in a car, get high and Tony tries to kiss her, which she avoids. If she plays along with him, he will play also, it's the first time when she shared a smile with him. Tony arrives at a small house at night. The door is opened by an old woman, his mama. A big smile appears on his face when he sees Gina, his sister, who is also happy to see him. At the table, Gina talks about her job in college, and that she will make enough money after two years. Tony interrupts her, saying that his little sister does not have to work in the beauty parlor and his mama does not have to work in the factory. He hands money to mama who is skeptical and asks who he killed for the money. Tony explains that he works in an anti-Castro group, however, she does not believe him, does not accept his money and orders him to get out of the house. The money he gave them, it stinks. Gina breaks out to catch Tony and says that she does not care about any of this because they are one blood. He gives Gina the money and tells her to treat herself as he deeply cares for her. When Tony gets back in the car, Chico expresses his sympathy for Gina, but is warned to stay away from her. Omar, together with Tony, are at Mr. Sosa's Yeyo factory in Bolivia to discuss business opportunities because Frank couldn't come. Tony approves the quality of the goods, but the conversation gets heated at the dinner table as Tony suggests better ways of doing business. He doesn't listen to Omar who prohibits Tony from negotiating the deal without Frank's permission as he has no authority to do so, which Mr. Sosa appreciates and asks to continue. Later, Omar is sent back to Miami to discuss the matter with Frank, but is hanged from the helicopter shortly after. Tony is told that he was an informant for the police, raising questions if Tony can be trusted. He says that he has his balls and his words, and will not break them for no one. They understand each other from half a word. Frank is mad that Tony made a deal for 18 million bucks without checking with him. Tony talks him into believing that they can make 75 million on it, but Frank thinks Tony is making his own moves and commands to stall the deal with Mr. Sosa, because he is the boss. He reminds him of a lesson which he told back when Tony first started. The guys who last in the business are the guys who fly low-key and quiet, but the guys who want chicas, champagne and flash, they do not last. Some time later, Tony has come to see Elvira, who has already heard that he is no longer working with Frank. He confesses to her that he likes her and wants to marry her, with a woman besides him, he will be on top. She sighs, asking what they are going to do with Frank, but Tony sees him as nothing, he's not gonna last forever. Without hearing an answer, he leaves her to think about it. Together with Chico, Tony arrives at the club where he notices his sister dancing around. He does not like it, but as he is about to do something, Chief Detective comes to talk to him. Tony invites him to his office and Detective tells that he knows Tony is supplying a lot of yayo. He wants a number for himself in exchange for his protection. While they are discussing the deal, Frank arrives along with Elvira and without a lot of thinking, Tony leaves Detective and joins at her table, to find out an answer to his question from her. Frank interrupts him by telling him to find his own girl, but Tony says he already did. He does not listen to Frank's orders and says that orders can be given only from people with balls, making Frank leave the table as a coward. He takes Elvira with him, leaving Tony alone who asks her rhetorical question, when she will finally learn that Frank is nothing, it's clear who's the bigger boss now. Tony shares his thoughts to Chico, Frank sent a detective on Tony because who else knows about Rebenga, if Omar is dead. He freaks out when he sees Gina leaving with a man, rushing after her. She is taken to the man's private room to have some fun. Tony blows open the door and pushes the man out of the lounge. He threatens her, saying that in case she shows up here again, he will wipe her all over the place. Gina goes crazy, 
she will not be told what to do, making Tony lose his patience. Chico helps her by driving her home. He says that Gina is the only pure thing Tony has left, advising her to find a good man with a real job, but, unexpectedly, she asks Chico to go out with her. She has noticed the way he looks at her, however Chico denies her offer as she is Tony's little sister, ending the conversation. At the same time, Tony is lonely sitting in his office when suddenly, two men from a distance, open fire on him. He drops to the floor and takes out a gun, shooting down one of the men. He manages to escape outside and drives off. Chico enjoys his time with Blondie when the phone rings. It is Tony, telling him to meet him outside Lopez Motors. After the call, Tony instructs one of his men to call Frank at the precise time, to tell him they screwed up and got away. At the Lopez, Frank is relaxing in his office with the detective and his top guy, when Tony and Chico show up. Frank fakes that he is shocked to see that Tony is wounded. Tony sits down with a gun in his hand and tells Frank to answer the phone. After receiving the call organized by Tony, he says that Frank is a fucking cockroach. Frank lies to him, but understanding that he's in a bad situation, finally admits that it was him. He offers him 10 million or Elvira in exchange for his life, but Tony does what he meant in the first place, ordering Chico to shoot him. After Frank, it is the detective's turn, who gets a first-class seat to heaven. On his way out, he almost forgot about Frank's top guy. You want a job, buddy? Sure, Tony. Okay, then you call me tomorrow for which he is very grateful. Tony wakes up Elvira and tells her that Frank is gone, telling her to pack her things, she's coming with him. He has finally made it, he has the world and everything it brings. Tony has the money, the power, and the woman. He has opened a salon for his sister and married his love from first sight. He even has a tiger that he wished to have. After some time, a bank employee pays Tony a visit. He explains to him that for this amount of money, it is getting harder and harder to rinse it and that he will not be able to take any more of his cash unless he raises the interest rates. Because of Tony's greed, they do not come to an agreement and the banker has to leave. A few moments later, Tony checks the video cameras and asks Chico about the cable truck that has been in front of the house for three days, ordering him to check it. Chico thinks he is paranoid, since he is not the only one who lives on the block and has a fat budget for security, but Tony explains they have become sloppy, it can make them suffer. They continued their conversation in the bedroom. Chico gets up to go on a date, but lies about the girl because he is afraid to tell Tony that it is Gina. Before he leaves, Tony asks about the deal and tells him to stay out of it, confusing his friend as they are partners, but Tony says he is only a junior partner who likes ladies more than money. Chico is upset and pissed about this, saying he should listen to his wife that he is an asshole. After he leaves, Tony yells that he is the one who put this thing together. He trusts himself and does not need anybody. Tony is counting his pennies to transfer them to his company. This time Chico is not there, as Tony told him to. Suddenly, the money launderer pulls out a gun and points it at him. He is arrested by the cops and wants to call his lawyer who's gonna free him and send Seidelbaum to Alaska. They meet in the lawyer's office, who informs Tony that he will get three to five years in a can for laundering the money and avoiding taxes. Tony gets even angrier when Chico says that jails are like hotels and tells his lawyer that he will give 800,000 bucks, which will be enough to buy the Supreme Court, but the lawyer doubts that, it will be impossible to convince the jury that he found 3 millions in a taxicab. To solve the tax problem, Tony meets with Mr. Sosa and other gentlemen in Bolivia. It is possible to avoid jail time because of his connections by paying a fine. In exchange, he has to help with another problem, Mr. Sosa is portrayed in the news as a drug lord. One of his men will do the dirty work, but he needs a little help from Tony as he doesn't know the language and the states. Without many options left, Tony agrees on helping out. Back in the US, Tony asks to run the business for him since he has to be in New York next week. Chico doesn't like it because he sees no connection between this business and Mr. Sosa, but Tony blames him for the messed up deal, now facing the problems. He is depressed and thinks out loud about his life, because he has a junkie as a wife from whom he cannot have children because she is polluted. After talking badly about her, the brawl arises between them two, during which she asks him what kind of father he would be and if he even would be alive. Elvira tells him that she is leaving him as they have become losers now. Tony is spying on the man, Mr. Sosa's problem, when a mechanic shows up to fix the man's car. The next morning, the victim comes out of the building and they can follow him, but the plan goes wrong when the man's family joins him in the same car. Tony tells his squad that they will kill this man alone, no wife, no kids. However guy in the shotgun insists that they need to do it now if Mr. Sosa said so. Tony follows the man's car and is frustrated when he sees kids playing in the back seat. The man in the shotgun tells him to speed up so he does not lose them, but Tony loses his patience and gets rid of him. I tell you, no fucking kids! No, but you wouldn't listen. 
Quiet, you stupid fuck! Look at you now! Later, Tony is informed by one of his men that Chico took off and that Gina is gone. He is pissed at the news, but asks to tell Alvira he loves her if she calls. When Tony enters his house, one of his guys is in a hurry to tell him that there is no news from Chico and his mama wants to see him. He orders to find Chico and goes to call Mr. Sosa who's been calling him for every half an hour. Mr. Sosa already knows that the deal is off, but he wants to know what happened. Tony says that he cancelled the guy's contract. He will do the job next month, but that is not possible since they found what was under the car. He loses his temper when Mr. Sosa calls him a monkey who was informed a long time ago not to mess with him. Tony declares a war with him, but Sosa has hung up the call already. He is at his mama's house to find out where Gina went. She blames him for Gina's behavior and says he ruins everything he touches. He leaves her crying and heads to the car to find Gina. He arrives at the address mama gave him. He knocks on the door and Chico opens it, but he's not alone as his sister runs out the bedroom in her pajamas. He is not happy about what he sees and kills Chico. He really ruins everything as mama told him. Gina is terrified and rushes to help Chico, but it is too late. She says that they married yesterday and wanted to surprise him. One of his guys takes Gina away who tearfully says she hates him. She is taken to Tony's and it drives her crazy because she does not want to stay here. Tony is alone in his office, thinking about what he has done. His guys come in to tell that they gave some pills to calm her down. When asked about the next move, his answer is simple. We're gonna eat that salsa for breakfast. Close that fucker down. Poor Tony, he lost his wife, his partner, even Gina has turned her back on him. He walks around wondering how he could kill his best friend. Unexpectedly, people have passed by CCTV cameras and run into the territory, quietly eliminating the biggest part of Tony's guys. As he sniffs one more time, he sees Gina offering her body to him, but Tony does not understand her. She pulls out a gun and starts shooting in his direction, saying that she belongs to him as he never wanted other men to touch her. He tries to calm her down and moves aside, but he gets shot while she continues asking to fuck her. Not being noticed, one of the invaders manages to climb onto the balcony, comes inside and opens fire at Gina. Tony grabs him and throws him into the pole, finishing him off with a gun. He sees people rushing towards the house and is told to leave by one of his guys. He walks closer to Gina and tells her to talk to him and not to be mad. Still in shock, he hugs her tightly and says he loves Chico and her, not understanding that she's dead. The intruders have surrounded the door of his office, leaving only one option for him, pointing a gun at them. He steps out of the office and the carnage begins. He manages to get rid of many cockroaches and uses a body as a shield, to reload his gun and continue his farming, but to his surprise, he gets shot in the back from a cockroach who sneaked from the back, finishing Tony forever. The End Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.